As you might know, I'm at university studying to become a real astronomer. So I'm going to take a break from pretty pictures just for a little while. And you might find that I'm doing these videos which are a little more sciencey, I guess. Um, but anyway, today I'm going to show you how you can use your observatory or your telescope, your camera, to measure the distance to the moon. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. So parallax is a method that you can use to measure the distance of something based on how much the angle of something in the background changes as you move from point A to point B. Camera one, camera two. <laughs> camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. That's called parallax. It's only useful really at shorter distances and for a long time it was the main method that scientists used to measure the distances to distant stars and things. But these days we kind of restrict that method to about 100 parsecs. Beyond that there are other more accurate ways of measuring distance like redshift and things like that. This is a concept called the distance ladder in astronomy. But let's measure the distance to the moon. first thing you'll need of course is a camera and maybe a telescope but you don't necessarily need a telescope. Uh, for this experiment I ended up using just a 200mm lens on a tripod. This one here, thanks Todd for letting me borrow this again. Now the other thing that you'll need, and this might be harder for you because you're an astronomer, is a friend. Yes, you'll need a second observer to take a photo of the moon at the exact same time but that person needs to be a long way away from you. And in my case, I have a very special friend to do this experiment with, Terry Lovejoy. That's right, the Terry Lovejoy, famous comet discoverer who has discovered numerous comets from his backyard. So Terry and I got together and we organized this mostly over Twitter. And we basically synchronized one night and set up the camera to take a, an image of the moon using 400 ISO, f5.6, 200 millimeter focal length and exposing for one second. Now you need to do this with an early or late phase moon so that the moon doesn't blow out all the stars. You want to be able to see some of those background stars. Step two, you need to overlay your images so that you can see and measure the distance between the pixels and how many pixels that the star moves from image to image. Write that number down. Step three is to calculate your arc seconds per pixel. Now for this we use, or I use, the Bintel Astronomy Calculator. Basically just plug in your camera values and your um, focal length and all that sort of stuff and it will tell you how many arc seconds each pixel represents. Now that we know how far the star has moved in terms of pixels and how many arc seconds each one of those pixels represents, just times those two numbers together. And that will give you the total number of arc seconds that that star has moved. The next step is to write down how far apart you and your friend are. You can use Google Earth and use the ruler tool on this just to get the exact distance. Now the curvature of the Earth will affect things and ideally this distance for the trigonometry to work has to be the distance through the Earth. But if you're not too far away like Terry and I in this case, it's a fairly good approximation. This will be our baseline distance. Now for the next step we need to calculate the parallax angle. So take that total movement and times it by 0 0.00027 repeating, which is the number of degrees each arc second is worth. Now later on we'll divide this by 2 because we want to right angle from the midpoint, but don't worry about that. Just write down that total parallax angle for now. Now we have all our values. All we have to do is plug in all of these values into this formula. Mathematical! You can type them into a calculator if you are a huge nerd from the 1960s or I just dumped the whole thing into Wolfram Alpha. By my calculations the result was about 320,000 kilometers so it's off by about 60,000 kilometers but we're just using backyard equipment here and I'm just using a very simple formula. There are more detailed and accurate ones and if you want to go through this in more detail I do recommend checking out Terry Lovejoy's link. He did an independent calculation based on the same data and a bunch of us astronomers on Twitter also all joined together and we all synchronized to take a photo of the moon at the same time so that Terry Lovejoy had more data to do this calculation 
with more accuracy. So there you go. What's the point of having all of this cool astronomy gear if we can't do a little bit of science here and there? And you don't even need a telescope, you can just do this with a camera. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry for the short video. I will get back to more astrophotography in due course. I'm just a little bit busy with university and preparing my talk for the NEEF conference in New York. So I hope to see you guys there. Please, if I've made a mistake, do sound off in the comments. I really enjoy seeing your work and keep tagging me in those images because I do like to see them. Well, it's been a pleasure. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.